Who is God? Allah or man? Or are they one in the same? Please explain. This is a beautiful question. You know, the Arabic language is the most mathematical and precise and exact language that there is. I do not understand who is Master Farad Muhammad because my religion teaches that you can't see God. God is a spirit, not a human being. Well, maybe so. And certainly you have not seen the God who created the heavens and the earth, and that is true. So in that sense, that's right. But if you read the Bible, I don't know what religion you're in, but if it's based on the Bible, Enoch walked with God. Moses saw him and spoke to him face to face as a man speaketh to his friend, according to the Bible. Abraham said three men approached him, and one of them was the Lord. And Abraham addressed this man saying, Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, pass not away from me. And then told the Lord to sit down. And then went and talked to Sarah, told Sarah, fix some vittles because the Lord may be hungry. Yeah, this is in your Bible. I don't know what God you're referring to. Because he said, Adam heard him walking in the garden. <laughs> right in the Genesis, somebody heard him walking. He can't walk unless he have feet. <laughs> Read the Bible. He said, his eyes behold the good and the evil. The wicked, their wickedness stunk in his nostrils. The mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. I have heard your moaning and your groaning. Look at the book. My arm is not too short that it cannot save. And on his thigh was written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And on his head was a crown. Huh? So maybe you need to see God. Why does Master Parad Muhammad have to pray and study? You know, Master Parad Muhammad was born. He grew up as a child, like you. You had to study. He had a magnificent brain, but it had to be filled with knowledge. How else could he become a master if he did not study? And if he did not have a teacher to make him a master, who does he pray to? He prays in honor of the originator of the heavens and the earth. He has the knowledge to perfect the creation of the God, but he has to pay honor and homage to the originator who gave him his work to do. If it were not for the originator, where would his body come from? Where did his brain come from? Where did the thought of universe come from to perfect? Came from the originator. He has to give honor to the originator of the heavens and the earth. So when we say, surely I have turned myself to thee, O Allah, huh? trying to be upright to him who originated the heavens and the earth, we are paying honor to the originator. Master Farad Muhammad is not the originator of the heavens and the earth, is he? He was born in 1877. But he studied and has become a master of this. Showing you that if you take the course that he's giving us, we too can become a master. And this is what's meant in your scripture. Jesus said, come follow me. He said, I go to do what? Prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Is that right? 
he ascended into heaven to sit where? At the right hand of God. What does that mean? He becomes the executor of the will and the demonstrator of the power of the mind of the Creator. The Bible says that God put everything under Jesus except He Himself, meaning He became master of the laws and forces that govern creation. You can't do that without study. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told me that he was going away to study. And he also said to me, Brother, when you see me again, if I didn't tell you that I was not God, when you see the power that I will be uh, demonstrating, he said, you would be found worshiping me if I didn't tell you that I was not God. Mm. Now that's some power. Mm. He's going away to study. To study under who? The same master, Farad Muhammad, that woke him up in the beginning and gave him an assignment that he accomplished. Now he goes to get his reward. And what is his reward? Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, power. This is what you say in the Lord's Prayer. That he gets glory and honor and kingdom and power forever. The Lamb of God, worthy is the Lamb to have riches and power and glory and honor for how long? Forever. You've got to study to qualify for that. When the angel puts one foot on land, one foot on sea, and says, time that thou knowest shall be no more, he's calling an end to the time. And the judgment is going on on both the righteous as well as the wicked. In the Quran, there's a saying similar. Corruption has appeared on the land and on the sea on account of what men's hands have wrought. That Allah may make them taste a part of what they had done so that perhaps they may return. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, in the physical sense, it means the end of this present world. Where that angel that will put his hand on land and sea and literally cut a shortage in gravity. Right in the atmosphere, these are atoms, and th this, this atom of oxygen is balanced with nitrogen, right? And hydrogen, hydrogen, right? But once you cut a shortage in the air and separate the oxygen from that which balances it, you have pure fire. The Bible tells you, Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all that do wickedly, yea, the proud, shall be as stubble. And he shall pluck them up and leave them neither root nor branch. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that God will actually wall off the atmosphere of North America, make it like an oven, and cut a shortage in the gravity, and fire will come down from 13 layers and burn everything that is left. And it will take... Um, fire will burn I think for 600 or more years and take about 390 years to cool off I believe those figures are right and let me know if I've made a mistake but it will the total is a thousand years before anybody will inhabit this part of the earth again when God gets ready to destroy it the righteous will be taken out before that happens, but the wicked will be burnt with fire. And that's what your Bible and the Holy Quran teaches. That's a tough angel. You don't want to meet him unless you're out of here. You want to be like the rapper saying, I'm out of here. I purchased a book here titled, Is It Possible That the Ambulance Muhammad is still physically alive. Is he still physically alive?
Is he on the mother plane? Where is he? I believe he's physically alive. He may be on the mother plane, or he may be elsewhere. I personally don't know where he is. But when I received that vision, I got it from him on the mother plane. 